Okay, but uh, let's uh, start. Uh, as usual in my talks, I will assume you can read English. If not, you are in the wrong country. So, S3. First, uh, uh, I think this is the third storage engine that is made for storing things on S3. There have been several attempts, uh, and uh, nobody knows ever did uh, its production. It's kind of production ready because it's already used by some customers in production. But about S3, it's a horrible idea to store database on S3. And uh, the, the customer really, really wanted that, and we tried to satisfy customers, so I did it. So S3 briefly is a way to store files easily. You can get the good, it's uh, not fast uh, for a database. And uh, for example, move doesn't exist. They have a move command. ABS will basically delete that and uh, read copy, which of course makes hard for database to want to change blocks. And for uh, how many have used this tree here? Okay, for those who doesn't know, it uh, kind of looks like a file system, but it isn't. Basically, when you buy it, you get the bucket, and that's kind of your base address at uh, some web page, and within there you can store keys with slashes, and then you have commands that can kind of show you what exists in a kind of a directory, but it isn't. So this is a three storage engine in Moravia. So the customer that uh, uh, needed this, they had a, uh, seems to be a standard issue with big organization that you, you, you take, get the machine, and that's what you have. And these customers uh, had a standard machine, it's the, the, the 2 gigagram, 2 terabytes of disk, that's it. I know some of the branches needed much more data, archive data. So they couldn't really store it in the machine. And uh, they couldn't get bigger ones because that's what we had. So they come up with an idea that maybe we can access the data to S3, so they contacted uh, me and asked me, so can you do a, uh, some storage in the I said, I don't want to do something, can you do updates? But uh, for archive purposes, it's read only that you can store things archiving and then you can use, use partitions to handle lots of those. That I can do. And that's really what we agreed I should do. Uh, so, and this also there is trees that is actually more secure storage and uh, much cheaper. Yes? Why do you functionally compress? Why do you even need non-compressed data? Have any usage, have any data. Let's say yeah, I wanted it to, it to work first. Okay. And it's much easier to test. Yeah, yeah. It. I just asked about And, uh, and uh, I have only implemented the uh, tip, um, but uh, it's trivial to add, uh, add uh, any order. Any order. Oh, I thought you just were very popular. Yeah, because we have it already in the, uh, in the source code. I mean, we did it in the. Do you see? No, it, it, no, not much. Yes. But it's just an option. Just put in a config file and it's okay. So, uh, but uh, um, it's actually really fast. Uh, so it was so fast. That I actually didn't expect it to be fast because. And I run things from home against against the street for testing. It's really slow. But the customer, when I was visiting the last time, said that, "Oh, this this three engine is so fast. Why can't you make uh, even media as fast?" So apparently, I did something right. So we support all because this the format is based on the area storage engine. So we support all key uh, compressions, uh, indexes, uh, everything that the area supports automatically, which is kind of nice. It has its own page cache, so it doesn't need conflict with anything else. Uh, it's, it's in, in Tent 5, but about some of our customers who wanted S3 are using earlier versions of MariaDB, so we are back, we have backward with the MariaDB Enterprise Server. And that actually, I think, is a good thing between uh, using the community and the enterprises that uh, if you use the latest, you get the same thing, but we will be, customers doesn't like to upgrade. 
so you provide more features for the customers without upgrading. And uh, this is something that the community doesn't want because uh, they really, most people don't want us to go and do big changes in already stable releases. Okay, so how to use this? You have a table, you want to use it in S3, you come into another table and, and it's in S3. Okay, what talk is that? <laughs> kind of. But internally, I first create the area table uh, with uh, row format page and without transactions because I wanted to have it as, as compact as possible. And because I really created from the start, there's no gaps, everything, all pages are lined up perfectly, which actually makes caching much faster. That's one of the reasons why this is so fast. I also created a tool, uh, I don't know if it's useful, but uh, this is really good for testing, so you can, if you have lots of area tables, you can copy all of those to S3, or you can take the tables in S3 and copy them back and you can delete things in S3. So for somebody who wants to do batches and test things, this is, or want to convert uh, terabytes without affecting the server, you can just do this. So the, the new uh, options for the table that is generated for S3, you have uh, the block size, uh, each table can have its own block size. If you don't put anything with it, put 4 meg, because uh, the testing we have done with some customers, 4 meg seems to give you the best performance. It's also the reason that uh, uh, the, the S3 search is so fast that when we read one block, uh, then we have to read everything around it. And so we always read 4, four meg at, at a time. So we, and if you do, for example, read next, all those pages already in memory. And the compression with, with CP already get about 70% compression. We are probably going to look at adding something uh, else also, but I don't think that for indexes, especially the savings. So, uh, so, me. so to uh, set out that table, you also have to uh, add some configurations. You have to add how to connect to your S3. Um, or back bucket, or whatever they call it. So you have to just add uh, the, uh, the, uh, some uh, basically five parameters, and uh, also if you want the, the buffer that all the tables are shared. So uh, going to some of the problems with S3 is that one of the most uh, common way to use. Is, is, uh, is three because it's a storage engine that, that if you have a master and slave, you know, you have a, the master and the slave have their own S3 engine uh, and use different storage. In which case, everything just works. A replication works, no problem. The master will just send the queries uh, over. But the hard part was getting this to work because you want to have S3 as an archive. Then, then all organizations can potentially accessing uh, the same storage, which is fine except when you add replication. Because uh, if you do a change in the first master of the, uh, for S3, for example, you will rename all the table to add things. You don't want that to be repeated in the next one, because it's already done. So uh, here's all the things and tricks I had to change in the server when it comes to S3. So I added a uh, uh, quick check to see that if this is the distributed <coughs> engine, and in the, that case, uh, the slaves will ignore anything that has to do with S3. So, from the slave point of view, the S3 is more or less as a, as a uh, what is it called? Uh, not black box uh, table, but. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, but uh, black, black hole table. Except that as soon as we do something, we delete everything uh, on the slave. Because uh, if we do an alt that table, um, we have an FRM file on the slave that will be out, out of date. We always remove it. Because uh, the slave or the, or the user is using this discovery. So always when you have a table that doesn't exist, it checks it. If it exists in S3, it takes the FRM file from the S3 with it locally, so it knows about it. So I have to delete that if something changes. That's, that's not wrong. You can still have like two different pages, one on the master and one on the slave, and then have a copy of 
I mean, you have, you have two setups. Uh, you have this one or this one. So which one are you talking about? Oh, no, so, so it's going to just specify which setup you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to configure when you, when you use the server which one you are going to use because the server needs to know about it. So, uh, so, and on the master there is one problem, that if you have a table on S3 that is shared, and now we are converting it back to, to InnoDB, the slave can't repeat that, because it, when the slave tries to run that, uh, the slave knows that there is nothing in S3. So, what the master has to do, instead of doing a, a, an output table in the final log, it will instead uh, basically do a create table and insert, uh, like in insert select, and write them all the rows there. Of course, you only want to do that in the shared, shared scenario. So that's why you have two options to define what you do. If you ever have a shared storage, then on the master you have to have S3 replicate out that table as select. If you don't have that, uh, it assumes that no, no slave is using the same storage. And the only thing that you lose is that when you convert, convert from S3 to local, the binary will be a little bigger. And on the slave, you have to say that if you use the shared storage, you don't, uh, don't do anything with S3, and that's uh, S3 slave in your It's that is That's the only setup you have to think about. So, uh, so that basically was everything about using S3. If you have any question about using, you can do it now or later. Because now I will, I will quickly tell you for uh, how this was actually implemented. Because we have some people actually are developers here. So let them get a little bit about, uh, about what I actually had to do. I started by looking at the interface that is kind of the standard interface for using ABS, ABS DK, CPP. Um, it was interface using templates or te templates. It's relatively easy by following exa examples how, how to upload the table. But doing something else is totally horrible. I think that this is the one of the worst sequence bus code I ever seen. And I kind of uh, it reinforces my view that templates is something that you should never use. Uh, so I spent basically a week to try to get the, the simple thing of reading a big block uninterrupted uh, to them, to Maria B. And after one week, I kind of concluded that this is horrible. Because it also had to take care of the things in binary, not binary, then things are different. All examples was not binary files, and then uh, it was just horrible. And it's the code was bloated and hard, very, very hard to use. So what we did instead was we had Andy Haskins uh, creating a, a library based on Lib Curl, uh, who made things easy. This is LGPL, anybody can use that who wants to use uh, a stream. I highly recommend it, this makes life trivial. So these are basically the, the major operations. I always assume that you will read everything or write everything. So you have, you have list to know what uh, files are where, then you have get, put, delete. The list you only use to know does this. Actually, we have you use status to know uh, uh, if a table exists and, we, and, and when you do a discovery to show if table exists, then we use this. Otherwise, you have just put get and delete, that's what you want. It, much faster and much simpler than anything that Amazon provides by default. And um, it's basically three steps where uh, a librarian maybe is the API for keeping everything together. And this works both against Amazon S3 and other vendors version of S3 that can be slightly different because, of course, there's no standard. Actually, there exists one standard that ABS defined and said, here's what you have to use. And the only one who doesn't use that standard is ABS. Go figure. So uh, I tried to make it really trivial to find out where things are on. S3. So the layout I choose were basically 
And this, I think an example shows it much better. So you have the database too, uh, the table test, and then you are under there you have uh, the data, uh, it's kind of own key, and, it, and if, if it's one file, then it's one, if it, lots of files, then one, two, three, four, and so on, same thing indexes. The frame, the frame is that they're uh, separate, because we use that for discovery, and we also copy that uh, on discovery to, to your local files, so you can easily find them again. An area is just the first block of the index file, because we treat a different area, it has all information about all keys and structure and everything, so it was easier to have it outside. And that's it. So it's really easy for me. So to implement this, uh, I wanted to do something that is uh, supportable key formats and variations of uh, uh, optimi optimization that uh, the area scores in the supports. But uh, in the end, uh, the, uh, the, the, this is the first commit that basically has everything except replication. And that was uh, 4000 lines. And uh, just to get the feeling about how to implement this, here you have the different files and the, and the file sizes. And uh, in area, basically, I had only to change uh, open because instead of reading from disk, I know I have to read from S3. And uh, then I have, we had to extend the page cache to be able to, and then I read one block, instead of just reading the one block from disk, I did need to get this big block and put it in the page cache. So, then, the replication was the hard part. The, the, the engine done was actually pretty easy. And here you have the, all of the whole, whole handler interfaces for implementing the engine. And this kind of shows the power of the, the handlers. You can do really complex things with very, very little changes. So uh, the great, uh, uh, basically handles the outer, uh, the internal creation of the uh, area table and then converting it to S3. And the uh, right rows was needed because even if you can uh, update the uh, update in the S3 table, during outer table I need to be able to collect the rows. So that's why I needed to implement one. So, I already kind of uh, mentioned these ones. So those took some days to do, the page cache took, Osanya did that, took, took a week. And by the way, this is also proof that I'm still perfect. <laughs> because uh, except for the page cache changes and that Android helped me with the library, I wrote the list. So the uh, limitations, I said they are read only the added for archiving, uh, but um, because we don't, there is no locking uh, provided, so that if uh, uh, if one server drops the S3 table, the other ones will just get the reader. Uh, the page cache will basically handle the graceful, you will get the uh, error that uh, then read error or block, and then uh, there's not much you can do that, about that. And uh, adding uh, information is true that for every time you open a table, you create a block that, uh, that will stop the drop from happening while you're working on it. I thought that was too much overhead, so I decided not to do that, at least not in this stage. And if you alter the table uh, and somebody is using that, they will probably get, them, get, them, get an error at some point if somebody else is using it. If you're using it for the same server, you're fine. It's only in the scenario of multiple servers that the other servers are trying to access it because in that case there's no lock. So future work is that uh, currently we have these ABS keys. They are uh, in the configure, fi configure file. We have only specified ones. I would like to be able to have those different keys per table, so you can have uh, one table on this server and one table on that server. So we are then spider generated X uses a MySQL service table and we like to store the keys there. 
and uh, the, the customer, of course, uh, ex uh, wants additions. Uh, after everything was agreed, to that they, they did know that this is S3, this is right only. S3 is not suitable for database changing because so I can't change the block. I can basically delete the block and add the block. Anybody who is sharing that will be very, very confused. So, but they still want to be able to do updates in archive data things. So, I was talking with Sergey and uh, he, he came up with an idea that we can do some updating, uh, but only if one user is uh, doing that. And so, I probably have to do that at some point. But this is mostly for the idea that you have, let's see, you have transactions per month and you have one month here, and then after one month, you get some transactions that you want to have added to this partition table for, because you store things by month. So there will be a way to, that you can open that and add, the, add data. It will not be as nice a structure that is now, but it still will work. It will be faster than converting the table to InnoDB, do the changes and convert back. That of course works. But that's it. I hear this amazing silence. Uh, silence. Sorry. It's the implication of uh, if you do a uh, drop table something like that, uh, that it will just fail if the concurrent read on the slave or something like that. That's I mean, you mean the not fail on the slave. I mean, this, uh, these two scenarios works well. Yeah, you have something that uh, the. This is just what it does internal. Yeah, but if you do anything on the master, then on the slave, there might be uh, some uh, issues. Yeah, yeah so, so in this scenario, if the. The left one drops the table, yeah. the other, the other uh, um, slave will, if they are using it, they will get an error yeah. in the middle. And then that's a limitation if you just decided to... I, 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 I don't have, uh, customers haven't seen that as important because they are mostly interested in kind of this case. Uh, that this case was why I provided to, the, to them for free. And, that is the, and what you can always do is that uh, when you drop something and you basically, I mean, if you drop a table that is shared by everyone, then that means that the table is not important for anybody. Well, yeah, Eric. Uh, I understand that uh, this work for existing customers. Uh, my question is, do you see this as being uh, the kind of uh, solution that will see a growth in adoption? Uh, I, I ask because I don't see that I will use it, I, but I, I don't have the visibility. Uh, let's say this, are you ever planning to use a database in the cloud? Are you ever planning to pay for storage? This one, uh, all your old data that you have, you should use in this one because the, story, the, use, the storage is much cheaper in S3 than a local, this about one third, and you also uh, uh, be in 70% of the storage on top of that. So it's uh, 10 times the saving in storage. I, I know that Booking.com in your former company doesn't have any big databases, have no problem with storage. But there are other customers who may have an issue. <laughs> right. Thank you. Before uh, uh, I There's so little code uh, that is actually used. Anybody can go and hack and improve it. Yeah. This is the, no has something that is hackable. I mean, 4,000 lines. So, obviously, it's read only right now, but you said that uh, it's going to be added to work for the updates. Uh, I want to be able to provide uh, batch updates from, from one user just to be able to fill it up. So, once updates become available, Balance case to make use of S3 replication across region boundaries because one of the nice things is it's very fast to read. And it's extremely fast. And S3 is handling replication for you. It will allow you to have read only regions very, I think, very easily, potentially. 
I wouldn't uh, force sharing things across boundaries, but it's really only yes, the updates. Uh, I mean, they will work with replication, uh, but uh, yeah, but, I mean, it will work. But I, as I said, I don't recommend S3 for for uh, updatable databases. It okay. will work, but uh, just curious. Yeah. Do you mix uh, S3 and R in uh, different partitions in the same table? I don't think so, but in, in theory it should be possible because they have exactly all. No, the partition basically requires that all tables have the same physical structure and uh, physical properties. And they are, in theory they have all identical except the fact that this is not updated. And the area actually have a notion of non updatables So if you, if you do a partition where uh, where you ensure that no no inserts are coming to the S3 tables, it should work.